Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In today's episode, Henry interviews Ryan about his experiences of camping overnight for outdoor photography. They go over what to pack for a camping and backpacking trip, including food, water, and shelter, the difference between camping and glamping, how to balance hiking with photography, and why every outdoor photographer should experience sleeping underneath the stars. Welcome back to episode 57 of the All Outdoors Photography Podcast, and today I'm going to be interviewing Ryan about some of his camping adventures. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to say to add on to that. Um, yeah, so Henry's going to be interviewing me because um, I don't believe you've had too many camping like photography trips, and I've done quite a few. Um, I'm definitely going to do more in the future, so it should be a cool episode, I think. Yeah, it'll be great, and it's kind of nice to flip the script a bit and have one of us interview the other. Uh, I think we've maybe done this once before and it, I, I liked how it worked. So should be good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a gallery's episode probably. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that went pretty our well. Galleries and stuff. All right. So yeah. yeah, before we start, we just want to uh, talk about our Patreon. So, I mean, we have multiple tiers on there um, and we use discord mainly as a platform to uh, deliver that to you. And uh, so we have basically just like community sharing things, just, exclusive chats basically to uh, communicate directly with us of course um, some other specialized things like even like image critiques portfolio reviews uh, specialized live streams just for those uh, members and their tiers and everything so um, give it a check out you know and just see what you think of it um, we really mm-hmm. appreciate it if you'd like to support us in that way too yeah and check out our other social media as yeah. well uh, we've got instagram where we post uh three three clips a week on there if you can't catch a full show maybe uh watch the clips or something and then you know we also have youtube all those other platform platforms so uh yeah and if you want to leave a comment or let us know how the show's going we'd be glad to listen and if you have any guest ideas topic ideas uh we'll definitely uh take those under advisement so yeah definitely um yeah, so uh, is there any updates and announcements also before we start from you? Um, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I've got some pretty big things planned for this year. Uh, I'm going the biggest week. Ryan and I are both going in May, um, so that'll be fun. Um, I'm doing some workshop stuff there. I'll, I'll send out details when I'm closer to doing that, but I'm really looking forward to that and doing a bunch of shooting up there. Um, as far as, like, recent shooting uh the past two days i i went out a little bit uh i got these like really close up hawk portraits like closer than i've ever gotten like he was letting me get like really really close maybe like 15 feet and there was like bouquet behind him and everything and it it was just great um and then the next day uh i was at a nature preserve and i i had i saw green winged teal for the first time which is pretty cool um didn't get any good photos, but on the way home, I saw coyotes for the first time at all. I've never even seen coyotes, um, even without a camera. And I got some great photos of them. So it was a pretty good weekend. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. It's awesome. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. All the, the life bird and then just mm-hmm. the, the cool like, mammal sightings. Yeah. The coyote. That, those are neat, elusive yeah. creatures. <laughs> uh-huh. They're yeah, not too that's, close because awesome, I, I was afraid they they were gonna like charge me, so I stayed back. Uh, but oh, I kind of I think I pulled off the small and frame thing. I, I laid down on the ground to get like out of focus snow and stuff, so it looks pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, they probably noticed you pretty easily, right? Mm-hmm. Staring at you. Yeah, they saw me. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty shy creatures from what I heard. So, I mean, as long as you don't have, like, a small dog unattended, that's usually, the, like, the kind of things they attack. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think they really attack humans, as far as I know. They're, they're pretty, uh, like, I stay away kind of, like, from people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. So, I don't. I doubt it would worry you. I mean, be worrisome, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, I didn't want to, like, scare them away either. So, I just kind of wanted to <laughs> right. keep my distance, yeah. Get as close as you can for a shot, but... Yeah, within mm-hmm. reason, I guess. Yep. So yeah, what about that you? That makes sense. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I got my first exhibit, uh, 2022, um, it's at a local public library, um, something new I'm doing. I've never actually, uh, I don't think I've ever exhibited in a library actually. So, um, this is really exciting cause it's still with about, I think four or five of people from front street, uh, which I talked about before on the show. Um, so just, you know, a couple of my friends and everything were all in this kind of like group combined exhibit, um, showcasing, uh, smaller pieces of work and it, it's all different art mediums, but, uh, oh, pretty really cool. Um, I've never actually been up towards up north of Ohio in the Toledo Lake Erie area, so that'd be really fun to you know check out like Mommy Bay, uh, McGee Marsh, of course. Um, you know, particularly for spring migration. But I mean, we're both of us are spending um, I think about a week up there, so that's gonna be like a lot of time. I think to mm-hmm. really um, maybe relax a little because I, I do I don't take vacations really much, but like I'm definitely there to you know photograph birds and. Probably even some landscapes. I mean, shoot, with the lake there. I mean, I bet there's be some like gorgeous sunsets or something. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm stoked. This is gonna be a really really good trip. I can already mm-hmm. imagine. So it's gonna be a lot of life birds and lots of great photographs. And uh, yeah, so and we'll probably record a few pieces of content between both of us oh, yeah. um, for for our own channels and stuff. But also for this podcast, of course, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, another so. another live episode. So or not live. I don't know why I always say live, but you know, in the field <laughs> episode. So it's live as we're recording this, but mm-hmm. who who even knows? Yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll see in the field again and some other cool stuff. Um so yeah, basically I think that's about it for uh, announcements. Yeah. So uh like I said, I'm gonna be interviewing Ryan about his uh camping experiences. And he is going in completely blind, just like we like to do with our guests. So um, he could be blindsided here. You never know what I've cooked up. So Ooh, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about how you got into camping and what your first camping experience was like. Ooh, uh, not to answer a question with a question, but are we talking like photography minded camping trip? Um, just... Well, I would say. <laughs> Sorry. Kind of tell us about how you got into camping in general, and then maybe okay. spin it into photography too. Okay. Um, yeah. Shoot. I mean, I don't know. I, I I went camping quite a bit as a you know, like a kid, I guess, and it, you know, it'd be like a little like cutesy stuff, like you know, you pitch your tent in your backyard, and you, you know, you're outside sleeping, that kind of you know, just cutesy little stuff like that. Um, I really can't remember, honestly. Like, pretty sure I did do it on and off a little bit. Um, we had a field trip where he had like a a couple nights stay, but like that wasn't really like outdoors, but I mean like you're having like a cabin with like kids back then, um, you know, summer camp kind of stuff, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, fast forwarding to like more recently in the past year, um, I've been really looking at doing more, uh, particularly solo camping, actually, um, just basically hiking from a location, the trailhead, the parking lot, whatever it may be. And, um, hiking however many miles it is to the trailhead that I plan you know, a route for that night or day and uh, pitching the tent or whatever hammock, I guess. And uh, just kind of going through the whole experience, I guess, just like, you know, you pitch your tent, cooking the meal, you're, you may take some photos along the way even, um, but you're kind of just like there to just set up shelter and uh, yeah, just sleep the night, which, you know, it's the toughest part. Cause I, I'm honestly a little bit of a wuss and I hate the dark and like every little sound kind of puts me on edge. Um, which is, a, which is something I'll talk about maybe in a little bit. It's just like the nerves of it. Um, but I mean, it's like, it, I think it's great because you're just out in the middle of the landscape, wherever you may be at, and you get to wake up at sunrise and you get, you're just right in the middle of it and you can just take your camera. I've even like left the campsite and just wandered around with my camera and just start taking photos. Um, I actually think about like one particular morning where I did, when it was like really foggy and uh, just really cool conditions that like I'd normally have to drive to. And by the time I get there, maybe already dissipate you know that sort of thing um but yeah did that answer your question yeah that that was a great answer for sure okay um i mean like on your your first camping experience in general like did it did it go smoothly like any horrible failures or um no no not really i mean i the the one thing that's a little tricky sometimes it just depends on i guess your day and how you schedule things like like um, just getting there basically before dark. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm actually calling back to a, I made a big video. It's like a 40 minute video on my YouTube channel. Um, it actually got fairly popular traction, a um, couple hundred views of like stealth camping, um, which is something I've only done once so far. And I'm actually, I have ideas for local areas to like try it again. 
um, this coming year. And yeah, um, so it was something that actually, funnily enough, I, that first, the actual video recording, basically I tried to do that video on a different, like two weeks prior or something like that. And I got there at my, I got there at the spot I was at the location and I got there like way too late and it was already like way after dark. And I'm trying to pitch my tent in the dark with like my headlamp on and like the site I chose was just too much like twigs and brush and it wasn't even like comfortable. And like, and so it's like pitch black at that point and I'm trying to pitch my tent in the dark and I'm just like getting fed up and I'm like, this isn't, this, this sucks. And I walked to the location cause I didn't want to leave my car someplace overnight that like it basically shouldn't be. And it was that close by in my house. And I was just like, I just gave up and just like walked home <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> Yeah, so a you know, little little backstory about that video, but like the one I actually did end up doing it, like I said, a week or two later, and that video that's on my channel still um, for anyone to watch. Uh, that's the actual like trip um, where I chose a better campsite than the the first time, mm. and of of course I actually did it too. So, uh, but yeah, it's a little uh, unnerving, I guess, a little because <laughs> it's just like there's that stress of it a little bit, just trying to get there before dark and. Mm -hmm. Um, I might, my, my, I guess one of my like rules or mantras with this kind of stuff is to always like work before play, like get rid of, or not get rid of, um, get like do the work before the thing. Like, like what I'm saying is like hike to location. If you have to pitch the tent, get everything ready and then like cook your meal, then take photos. If you have time or want to, if the light's good, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so don't just like get kind of like on the single minded pursuit of like taking photos or I'm hungry. I want to cook the meal. Like get, just do the work first and then focus on the, like the, I guess, reward we'll say. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those, those photos, especially, I mean, you can get caught up in even one image and there's two hours and it's, it's dark. So <laughs> I can definitely see what you mean there. Yeah, definitely. And I, I've been guilty of it already. Um, where I'll be like out along the way hiking, I'll be like, Oh, you know, all my gear is like my camera is packed in the bag and it's going to take a few minutes to really get it out and get set up on a tripod or something for maybe like a landscape we'll say. And if I do that three, five times in a three mile hike and I have like 45 minutes to get there, like, dude, that's not going to leave me any time really to pitch a tent. It's going to be really dark by then potentially. And so I've been guilty of that where um, I get there a little too late because I just get so easily distracted. I'm like, Oh, the light looks good right here. You know, take the shot. I literally will step 20 feet that, you know, the next down the trail. Oh, there's a cool shot there. And then like, you know, at what point do you <laughs> yeah. really stop? I guess, you know? Yeah. You have to probably get into a different mindset completely. I mean, <laughs> when you're doing camping, cause it's just a completely different situation. Yeah. And it, it's, um, it, to sum it all up, it's like, it's a really humbling experience. I think, especially with solo camping is you're really, and you may not be out in the true wilderness. I'm I'm just dropped here in the middle of Ohio in like a metro park, let's say. But like you're out there alone, and that's like you're dependent. You're dependable only on yourself, and you have to rely on your own. You're kind of like quick wits, and you know, not that I've really been in like truly dangerous situations, like life or death. But like you do have to really be just self sufficient, we'll say, and uh, kind of know what you're doing. I think it's like if you just buy a tent and like start hiking, and you've never pitched a tent before you're probably going to have not really so much luck with it, you know, getting it set up in time, let's say. Like, you really have to know your gear and how it works and really have some practice with it. Like, uh, not to get on a tangent, but, like, when I first got my tent that I currently use, um, I think it's an REI Quarter Dome SL1. If anyone wants to look that up, it's a great, like, small backpacking tent. Weighs about three pounds, and it packs down to, like, a small little bag. And it's it's perfect. It's, it's great for my use um, for one-person tent that is. And uh, when I first got it, I would practice pitching it. And I would actually sleep in my backyard, like I said, like doing the kidsy thing, cutesy thing as a kid. Um, and, you know, just kind of practice being in it, pitching it, just, you know, almost like timing myself to see how much, how long it took me, that is. Um, so, yeah, just stuff like that, basically. Yeah, that, that's definitely a great tip. Because uh, we do that with cameras, you know, practicing, but people don't consider... Uh, they're more important gear, quite frankly, you know, to survive out in those conditions. So, Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like with the day hikes, you know, you go out to location and photograph stuff. This is a little bit different. You do have to shift like your mindset and be like, okay, I also have to pack, you know, food, water, you know, all, all times of year, of course, whether you, you know, do it winter or summer, uh, the shelter, be it you know a hammock or a tent or some kind of lean to or anything. I don't know, any kind of, 
makeshift shelter you want to you know use and uh just any other gear really um you know multiple layers if it's going to be cold you know at night or any time and uh you really just, yeah, you have to shift your perspective and really think about packing things intelligently. Um, and that means I may have to sacrifice, you know, not having so much gear with me to take photos. Like I may only bring a wide angle lens and uh, some kind of prime lens or something, or maybe a small telephoto. Um, I think one particular trip, I only took my, my big telephoto for like wildlife and uh, just used that exclusively. So um, you do have to trade off some things and, you know, to get some more luxurious things or just things that are also essential with camping too. Yeah, I mean, I feel like like if you focus on a specific type of photo too, uh, I just had a thought like warbler season, like you camp out in the habitat of a specific warbler, and because you can be there all day and pretty much all night, you can you can wait it out, try to get multiple looks at the same bird or something, so you can have that flexibility. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great point. Um, also, with you know, also like nocturnal creatures like owls or something, maybe that too. Um, trying to think uh there's actually i remember one time i lined up it was actually unintentional but i lined it up with a full a uh, full moon i believe it was or one of the uh moon phases like that and it was just like a bright sky night sky and it was actually quite beautiful to be underneath that um and i was actually kind of like in this swamp area like there's a swamp next to me i remember at the campsite but i was on this like flat grassy little section but i mean like less than a minute like walk outside of my campsite zone uh you're out in this beautiful meadow and like just seeing the full moon outside of there because I was just like, I knew it was going to look good. So I like walked out there in the middle of the night uh, before I went to bed. And it was just a beautiful view of that. Just the moonlight, just illuminating that whole field. And um, it was just really cool to see that. You wouldn't really want to see that but unless if you camped, you know, of course. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious on that, that first outing and kind of all your outings since, like how far like inland do you go or kind of out from uh, urban environments do you go? Uh, I know you said you were near your house for one, um, but like what, what's like the most remote you're willing to go, I guess. Um, I mean, sky's the limit really. So it's just a matter of the means of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not open to the more, the, the more remote, the better, I guess, you know, more off the grid. Okay. Um, but to start with, and maybe if I'm here to recommend, you know, recommending, I guess, things to people that may be curious about camping solo for photography or just camping in general, um, I would recommend, you know, to start your local parks. I mean, the, like the local metro parks, which by local, I mean, like they're about 30, 40 minute drive for me sometimes or from my house. That is sorry. And uh, they, uh, you know, it's like five bucks for a night. It's really cheap and you can just bring whatever you need. And, you know, you're self-sufficient on this primitive campsite um, and you have to hike to the destination. So, which I always like to do because I just like that kind of reward, that payoff at the end of like the meal and, you know, just kind of chilling out and relaxing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I would say in my experience, I've done ones that are like a couple miles away and, you know, it's just a nice little brisk walk, <laughs> you know, uphill, downhill, you know, in the woods or wherever it may be, but, um, driving at least. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of open to, you know, the wilder it gets, I guess, too. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> so kind of switching gears here um there's kind of a big debate in kind of the camping community that i've seen is kind of camping versus glamping so um kind of like what are what are your thoughts on that and have you glamped and obviously you fully can't but have you glamped as well and like what do you prefer uh i guess to define it for anyone that doesn't know uh glamping is glorified camping and that's basically anyone that drives up to the campsite and just like camps right beside it um, it's a very relaxed kind of casual form of camping. And I, I'm not trying to sound like I'm belittling people that do that. Cause I mean, it's totally their choice and I get it. Like it's great uh, because um, like these campsites I've done, actually it's unfortunate because you can't have fires in those campsites. Um, I'm only guessing it's because of like people packing in wood that might have like emerald ash borer or some kind of, you know, some termites, I don't know, stuff like that. And they might be trying to cut down trees. I don't know. Just absurd stuff like that. But um, anyways, glamping, yeah. I mean, that's something that I've not really done, at least maybe not since my childhood, if that. And I'm, I'm not personally the biggest fan of it, but, like, I understand it's place, too. You know, it kind of get, it gets you outdoors. It gets you camping. Maybe you're having dinner with your family or friends, you know, whoever you may be with. Um, 
but yeah, I, I don't know. I just like the work of it. You know, just kind of like you go to a place, you have to hike to the spot you're out. Cause it's like, you're more remote that way too. Like you're out kind of in the middle of the woods or pine woods or anywhere really. And that's just more my style, I guess we'll say, but I also like hiking. So maybe that's why. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's, you know, maybe if you're staying in a place for a longer period of time, you may want to look towards glamping, you know, just so you don't get burned out. But I think for, you know, one to five days or something, I think camping's, yeah, you can definitely do that. So, yeah. And, and also, Matt, it comes down to also like if you're with other people, their physical like ability level, because some people just can't hike quite as long or as far and that might put them down and you don't want to like, it could really like over exhaust them right and make them feel miserable like camping should be a fun experience overall um it can be work i guess you know pitching a tent you know it could be a little stressful sometimes or you know that uh twig snapping in the middle of the night you know kind of like puts you on edge or something but um kind of like what i called back to earlier about you know just practicing with your gear it's like i would say if you want to start camping just do clamping like just you know drive up to a parking lot some trailhead you know, pitch a hammock or a tent and just have a fire and just chill out and like get used to like sleeping outdoors, which I think is a big, big thing of camping. Um, that's still, I still struggle with, I guess, to this day really is just trying to get at ease about it and not be so, um, I will say sleeping is the hardest part of camping. <laughs> so in my, in my opinion, at least, um, yep. Yeah. And it's probably honestly the part you end up doing the least, uh, yes. once you wake up in the morning. <laughs> so, yes. Um, uh, if I'm being honest, I don't think I ever get a good night's sleep <laughs> sleeping outdoors. Uh, it's actually gotten to a point. The first couple of times I went, I had no earplugs. And I'm a very, very light sleeper, which doesn't help at all. So, like, the slightest little sounds. I remember one night I woke up. Actually, okay, I'll go back to the stealth camping thing. So, that's near a um, – there's a creek that uh, bisects in between me and the state route, like a highway. And there was traffic all night. Like, I thought it would taper off, but, like, it kept going. And, you know, this loud roaring, you know, semis and stuff are going past, you know, like a mile away. But, like, it's loud to me, of course, you know, right there by the creek. And I remember it was, like, 2 a.m., like, and I'd been waking up on and off. You know, a lot of it's in your head, like, at least in Ohio. I have nothing really to be worried about outside, sleeping outside of this. But like, I remember I think it was like two or three a.m. and I woke up to like coyote just going off. I mean, they're like just this whole pack of them, and they sounded. It's funny you're just talking about coyote, but like they were all just going off in the symphony of like their the call or whatever. And like it sounded. I mean, at night maybe it's just paranoia, but like it sounded very close to me. But it was like a lot of them going off, you know, just this rapid succession. And <laughs> I would be lying if I didn't say like I thought about just packing up and walking away. <laughs> But I was like, I was just like, no, Ryan, just, you know, stay where you are. It's for the best. You know, you'll be fine. You know, in intermittence with all these twig snappings and just little bugs and noises I kept hearing on and off. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just one of the things you learn as you go. And I've taken great lengths to like minimize it. So campsites that's really noisy at, I kind of shy away from campsites that are much more quieter. I, I tend to be more gravitated towards. And um, honestly, at this point, I also wear earplugs, like, and that helps quite a bit to dampen sound. It doesn't quite get rid of everything, which might be good, you know, from a safety perspective. But like, you know, earplugs do help, I think, with just drowning out and dampening just all the different little ambient noises you may hear outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. Um, I mean, are you ever concerned about people, too, when you're camping in these kind of Ohio parks? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always a concern and I've had people ask me to, um, especially with some of these like more busier adventure parks and fortunately I never had like a super bad experience. Um, I mean, just, I think one time there's actually, um, there's just some pine woods that I was uh, situated in the middle of, and it's a kind of like spur of the trail where like you have to like hike out of your way. Like, it's not like your everyday, like people just going by, you know, country. So like, that's more for people that just like are hiking around, but like. The only thing around there besides a loop trail is the campsites. And it's not really like a bad story. It's just kind of like, it was early in the morning. And I'm like sweating is middle summer. And I'm quite frankly shirtless. Cause I'm just like, you know, stripping sweat and I slept like that. And this guy like walks by, I'm just like, Oh, Hey, what's up? <laughs> just waving at him. You know, I just like woke up like a few minutes ago <laughs> outside my tent and everything. It was, it was just like a, it was like an awkward wave. Like I, I acknowledge you, but I'm also kind of like thinking, 
you know, a little like, why are you out here this early? And like out here specifically, but no, I've never had like a bad experience, honestly. I mean, it's uh, knock on wood, I guess, but like it's a lot of it, I think is in your head and not to mm-hmm. say play dumb and just feign ignorance, but like, you know, I don't know. I've never had a bad experience really so far. It's just, it's just more of getting over that initial sometimes still initial hunch of like, you know, you're okay. You know, things are fine. You're, and then kind of like have to reshift your perspective and be like, all right, I'm out here to take photos and kind of like enjoy myself, I guess, you know, like they kind of like excite yourself again about like why you're doing this. You know, why, what, what's the reason to do this? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad you haven't had any bad encounters. I think, yeah, I mean, it is very rare. Like, you know, one, you got to realize like at night, nobody can see you. So nobody's going to come find you in the dark. Cause you know, you're hidden. So I, and. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm a very low key, quiet, like person by nature. And like, especially when I'm camping, I do not want to attract attention, even though it's like, not that I'm doing anything wrong, but I'm just like that where I'm like, like usually before bed, I'll drift off to sleep. But like, I'll have a book open and I'll switch my headlamp to not the bright white light, but I'll switch it to the red light. Just kind of like have a much more dimmer, I guess, light source, even though I could still read, like read the book, you know what I'm saying? Um, Mm -hmm. So I I just like to be low key with everything. Um, Pack in, pack out, you know, leave no trace of course and uh you know i'm, I'm not gonna lie I, I honestly don't like camping outside it's my least favorite part because it is just so tough and getting a good night's sleep is next to near impossible and in the moment i do miss my bed i do miss the comfort of air conditioning and the heater on you know all that stuff and just like the safety of being in like being closed in four walls but like i do have to remind myself you know but through the sweat through the bugs through the just the pouring rain to hike somewhere and pitching a tent in the middle of that. Like you have to remember, like, I guess it's all a part of the experience, you know, and you're out there to take photos, like I said, and really enjoy it. I think and it makes great stories too. So <laughs> for what it's worth. Yeah, for sure. Um, so kind of one thing that I know a lot of people are scared uh, for getting into camping is kind of the gear side of things. So like if you're going on kind of a, a camping trip, w- what do you carry with you? Um, and what do you think is really required to, to do those camping trips? That is a great question. Um, I mean, it's basically just thinking of what's the essentials. So like your shelter. And like I said, that could be a tent, a hammock, um, it's kind of just anything. I mean, like if you really just want to, you could sleep outside with just a sleeping pad. Um, if that, if you're, if you're comfortable with that and the weather permitting and all that kind of stuff, um, and just a sleeping bag even, but, um, I recommend, yeah, some kind of shelter, um, preferably if you're starting out trying to get the most nicest gear you can get. Um, and that means the lightest weight, which usually means the most expensive and uh, get gear that suits you and that you like using. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of solo camping, of course, naturally you'd have like a one person tent. It'd be lighter weight. It'd be much smaller footprint. It'd probably even easier setup, maybe. Um, but if you have more people, of course, add on to that, um, obviously. Um, and then like sleeping pad, I would say is recommended. Um, honestly, I would say it's required because like you can sleep on the ground floor of your tent, but it's like probably pretty bumpy and not really the most comfortable thing. Uh, so I'd recommend that just some like inflation and just really feels kind of feel like it feels like you're at home, I guess, you know, it really does feel like it's more comfortable that way. Um, a sleeping bag, uh, depending on the season, I usually, I use a three season one. Um, if you're going to be in doing a lot of cold winter hiking and camping, I would say a four season, obviously. Uh, other than that, I mean, inflatable pillow. Um, if it rains, have like a rain jacket, of course, poncho, umbrella, some combination of those or just one. And probably, uh, I use backpacking stoves. So something that's nice and lightweight and portable. So I'd recommend like an MSR pocket rocket or like a jet boil. Um, I, I yak both. I use the jet boil for most of my trips. Um, I just find it works out well. And then, uh, just some basically water, of course, don't be stupid and forget water or think like, I'm, Oh, I'm going to be near a water source. Like you're going to say that, but like you might have to hike another mile just to get to the nearest Creek or, you know, water, water bed or anywhere. And, uh, yeah, so always pack in water, get some like hydration reservoirs and use those. Um, that's what I use. They're great. Or even just basic Nalgene's uh, water bottles. And then, of course, food. So, I mean, that's a combination of whatever you can get down to, like what whatever foods you may like. So um, I usually use like MREs. Um, I don't do too much like full on cooking, like from scratch out in the outdoors, just because I like to keep it simple. But you could do that if you're if you like cooking and fancy that. 
And then uh, just some energy bars, something light snacks, protein, meats, or whatever you may like. Dried fruit's great. I love like dried mangoes or something, cranberries, just something that's like sweet and sugary. Um, so it gets you some sugars, you know, that you replace from sweat and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, if you're doing lots of hilly environments and habitats, do trekking poles if your pack load's pretty heavy, um, or even if it's not really too. Sturdy footwear is always, so boots or trail runners, stuff with good traction. Um, I mean, do you bring a, a change of clothes of any kind, or do you wear the same clothes? Or? You know, I kind of just sleep in whatever I'm wearing that day. Um, but, I mean, I wear, like, Columbia, like, cut-off shorts, like, short pants combo, and they're, like, Columbia, lightweight, like, like a nylon kind of polyester, or more, more so nylon, I'll say, um, pants. But, I mean, they're pretty comfortable, and I slept in them for all these trips. And uh, so that's what I would recommend. Um, not not that, like you don't have to get the exact same thing, but just something that's kind of like a lightweight pant or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of sleep in the clothes I'm in because I'm already if it's summer, I'm already kind of sweaty and humid, like that kind of thing. Um, but I mean, if you want, if you feel more comfortable with the change of clothes, feel free. I mean, it's just going to add more to your pack. I think that's where the trade offs come in. Is like yeah. how much do you really want to carry? you know, lots of clothes. I mean, if you're doing one overnight, like I usually do, it's like, who cares? I mean, honestly, if I'm there in the evening and leave in the morning or, you know, by noon, it's like, I'll be fine. I'll go home and shower, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you also mentioned leave no trace too. Uh, you want to explain that a little bit for uh, people who don't know what that is? Yeah. So leave no trace. Um, there's a whole website organization, um, that, you know, I, I firmly believe in with, you know, hiking and outdoor photography. And basically it just means, uh, as it simply put, leave no trace. Um, and, you know, even better would be leave, leave the place or the environment better than you found it. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll try to, if, if I find like a candy wrapper on the side of the trail, that's not going to, you know, really determine or, uh, you know, over encumber me to like carry it. So I'll just like stuff it in my pocket and uh, throw it away at the nearest trash receptacle or whatever it may be. Um, but leave no trace is basically, yeah, just leaving, I don't know how else to explain it, just leaving no trace. Um, so when I'm cooking these meals and I got some like trash with me or something like that, like I don't just throw it off to the side and leave it there. You know, I keep everything and I consolidate and pack it down and it may inconvenience me a little bit maybe, um, but like not really when I think about it because it's kind of stupid if you, in my opinion, to like leave it behind. Um, but I would just say, yeah, pack it in, pack it out and keep all of your trash, um, no matter how much it is or how little and take it with you, um, stuff in your bag somewhere that's not going to leak or get gross too much and, uh, just take it out. Um, uh, and I, I've been fortunate where I haven't found a campsite that's been trashed. Um, at least one that I've camped at that is. And so they're, they're, they're taking well care of, you know, and I plan to keep it that way too. When I ever I visit too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of on the, the theme of like renewable, um, products, do you ever do like water filters or, um, do you just bring enough water for the entire trip? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I recommend in general with hiking or camping is like have at least two, even better, three different kind of like water sources we'll say. So, um, what I'm basically saying is like, maybe it has some like filtration tablets that you can pour in, you basically pot up water into like a cup or bottle um, from like a water source, a wild outdoor water source where you don't know where the water is, if it's been treated or if it, has, it probably has bacteria, but like just things that like, you don't know where the water has been flowing from, let's say um, how many miles or whatever. Um, I would say like filtration tablets, they can just drop right in the container and dissolves and it breaks down all that bacteria and basically removes it and it makes it safe to drink. Never drink water that you don't know where it's come from, of course. And mm -hmm. um, and then I'd recommend like a hydration reservoir. That's where most of my water comes from, anyways. And then um, if you want to, you can get like one of those. I have one of those little life straws. If you ever seen those, they're good for like survivalists or hikers oh, yeah. or backpackers. Um, and that's very very lightweight. And you basically stick that straw uh, straight down into the water source. Make sure it's flowing clear. And uh, I think there's a third thing to that little saying, but make sure make sure it's a flowing water source. It's clear. And yeah, it just has movement. So uh, you stick that down and it takes the water out and it filters it as you basically suck on the straw that is. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've tried uh, all three and to, you know, varying degrees and it's, it, they all work pretty well, but I would recommend having more than one source. 
um, especially for those like really hot, you know, times of the year and seasons too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, food recommendations as well? Like specific types or? Um, anything that's, uh, I mean, it depends on like your metabolism and how you break down, but you got to imagine you might be carrying like a 20, 30, 40, you know, pound pack or whatever liter pack. And that's going to really burn calories faster naturally. Um, so you got to imagine you got to pack and plan ahead with your meals and have stuff that's very calorie and rich, uh, very calorie dense. Um, so I usually pack stuff that's like, like very hearty kind of like stews or, um, like a pad thai or something that has, um, maybe some protein or just stuff that's very, very calorie rich. And, um, I burn calories pretty easily when I work out or exercise. So, um, yeah, I usually pack those kind of like heavier soups or stews and they work out pretty well. Or like I said, also, uh, energy bars and stuff like that. Um, I recommend like cliff bars, lard bars, um, anything like that. And then for like MREs or anything of that sort, um, I love like backpackers pantry pantry that is. Um, I think mountain house is a good one. Uh, there's one called good to go. Um, they're really great too. Um, just to name off some brands that I've tried before. Um, but you know, do your research, go to your local outfitter store and, you know, don't be afraid to ask the employees to help you out. Like, Hey, wh which ones did you recommend? I've had people recommend me at stores before, uh, you know, ones that they like and I'll try them out. Um, and then like, especially in the morning, like I like to have something kind of sweet. So I like pack in some, like just some quick, uh, oatmeal basically and you just warm it up with some you know boiled water and that works well too awesome yeah those are all great ideas <laughs> um, you know it's you definitely want to pack you know enough uh, or I would say even more than you think you need oh, yeah. uh, just in case you, know, you get stuck out there for any reason so uh, <laughs> what about first aid kits do you, do you bring out anything like that yeah. De oh yeah, definitely. Um, mine's probably pretty late cause I, I knock on wood once again, I haven't had too many problems outdoors, um, beyond just maybe like scraping my arm on a twig or something as I walk by on the trail. And, um, but I, may, I would recommend it at the very least, keep the basics and it's not going to take up too much space in your pack. But, um, I, I think I found with hearing other people's stories from their beginnings uh, with camping is that they might bring too much first aid gear. And that could also be, you know, I guess have almost like an adverse effect. We'll say, um, but I would just say, just bring, I don't want to say the minimal gear, but just bring like, you know, your basic, your band-aids of different sizes, some butterfly tape, some gauze pads, maybe. Um, I mean, I don't know, just any kind of like topical creams. If you just really cut yourself real bit or just like a slight cut, we'll say, um, Hey, I mean, just basic gear, I guess like that. Um, if it's like maybe tick season, bring like tweezers, um, it's not really first aid, but I mean, I would bring like a signal mirror. I actually do have that in a first aid kit. And that's something that if you're really in like a dangerous situation and you're really out the wilderness, um, you, you basically flash this little mirror and it like can spotlight. It like reflects the light in the sunlight, we'll say. And it's can track down like people from a distance or maybe an airplane above. Um, that's just like a what if thing, we'll say. Mm -hmm. um, and if um, I know you don't encounter a situation, but like if you're in a bear area, Bear spray is a must. Uh, yeah. Bear, bear I know bell. It, Sorry, yeah, bear bell. Um, mm -hmm. I know an even dangerous, like really, like if you're in a grizzly spot or a, a polar bear spot, you need a bear alarm uh, to surround your tent. Uh, I don't know if you've watched any of Morton Hilmer's stuff, but when he goes on his like Svalbard trips and stuff, he has to surround his tent in like a fence that'll it'll blare a huge alarm if a bear crosses through. Um, and it's, it's pretty much essential cause you know, they'll, they'll come up on your tent. Um, and you know, you have to take those precautions. I know you have to, you have to put your supplies up high too for bears. Uh, there's just all kinds of things with that. So. Yeah. I guess it's worth mentioning that like I'm here in Southwest Ohio. So like mm -hmm. the typical Midwest, we don't have too much to worry about, but like, um, that's a great point that I didn't talk about yet is that I do most of the time hoist up my in like a separate uh, package or bag, um, all my food, um, whether I cook it or not, and even the food like packaging, because it's been opened and kind of releases the scent, of course. And um, I'll put it up on like a pole or a nearby tree and try to get high enough because um, while we don't get bears so much here, like pretty much next to never, there are, you know, other critters like raccoons maybe that might climb a tree or uh, maybe even a deer. I don't know, maybe. Um, and just stuff like that. So... Um, that's a great point. And um, it's worth mentioning, of course, depends on where you live. 
you may have more, I guess we'll say more things to worry about with wildlife and, you know, mm-hmm. coming to interacting with them and they may encroach on your campsite too. Mm-hmm. But I think it, it's definitely good. You still hoist, uh, because raccoons, you know, they, they're not going to hurt you, but they could, you know, they could get your stuff. So yeah, you don't want to mess around. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just something that I, I'm kind of doing it as a best practice and uh, maybe even out of habit, which is a good problem to have. Um, just uh-huh. because I may be in a situation where I may be camping out in bear country and, um, you know, hopefully I will have all those, you know, things that you mentioned, like the bear spray or bear belts, to, um, mm-hmm. you know, extra gear to protect me too. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you come up to Michigan, uh, this summer, you'll have to do that. You know, if you can, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's essential. So <laughs> I'll keep it in mind though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, have you ever done cold weather camping? I know you mentioned kind of a lot of warmer scenarios, but have you done anything safe below 30 degrees? I'm going to be honest. I, I mean, I'm not a fan of the cold at all, <laughs> but it's different when you're hiking out in the middle of the day and like you have layers on bundled up and you're moving. So like you're warming yourself up and like self-regulating your temp. Um, but I'm going to be honest. I haven't done pretty much any winter camping. Um, I talked about doing it with a buddy of mine, I think at Shawnee state forest and uh, we haven't gotten around to it, but I mean, I've had some cold nights like in late summer or even like early spring where it does get, it drops down below 50 or even sometimes below 40. And mm. um, you have to, you have to be ready for that. Like it, it could be, you could be sweating in the middle of the day, but you get to your campsite, it gets dark and you will be like, you know, around 40 degrees and you have to be ready for that sudden shift in temperature. Um, but I mean, no, I've never really done any like dramatic, like snow on the ground or, you know, below freezing, uh, you know, camping scenarios. Um, I should probably do them someday just to try them. But like, I, I, I just like the comfort of a warm bed, I guess. I mean, sorry. Mm-hmm. Can you yeah, blame me? I, I don't blame you. No. At, at least in winter, I'll say. In, in the summer, spring, summer, even fall, like I, I really don't mind the cold at night if it does get cold, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a yeah, I mean, it, it's dangerous too to sleep out in the cold. I mean, it, it just is. It yeah, and um, I remember one night I under a little cautionary tale. There was I think it was in early September on this past year, um, and I did this trail side camping where I basically biked to the location to camp. It was something different. I never done it before, but they had this specially made campsite that like was only available to register um, from through hikers and cyclists, and I was like kind of far away for me to walk there um at the time i had that day so i was just like i'm gonna cycle there and it was uh it was rough it was rough night sleep um i basically got no sleep if i'm being honest just kind of sat there and shivered because i was wearing a t-shirt my you know pants and i had no jacket and even underneath my three season uh sleeping bag it was just too it got dropped down really freezing not freezing but just it was cold for september and i was not used to it and um mixed in with the traffic nearby on a busy road like i got no sleep at all it was terrible <laughs> Yikes. Um, so yeah i i would honestly just yeah cautionary tale just bring more layers check the weather reports um i've been out i've been had a near experience with a thunderstorm it kind of went around me but it did get some of the winds that wasn't a big deal but um i've been out in the rain and um honestly my favorite part of waking up is the pitter patter of the rain on like your tent. Like this is so relaxing, man. I just, if, if you haven't had it happen before, I would explain for it. If you want to call it that, like I, I would suggest I, it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, dude, it's, it's great. I mean, it does make packing your tent down a little tougher because you have to factor in moisture. Like, and so if you, if you pack it down and it's wet still, once you get home, immediately wring it out and take it out of the pack again. And like, just kind of move it around and get it out in the open so that that water can wick away and, or wipe off um because you don't want to pack in your gear if it's wet because it does attract mild and mildew and mold and you know all that gross stuff yeah um so but i highly recommend that it's a great it's a great part of camping i think is waking up the little home little rain we'll say yeah it's nice yeah from what little camping i've done through like summer camp when i was younger um uh, you know the rain rainy mornings are are great for sure so um so i've got a couple more questions here um, this is kind of a more broad question, uh, kind of related to photographers. So why should photographers consider, um, adding camping into like their repertoire? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'll, 
and he said broad, but I'll narrow it down the outdoor photographers, especially, um, mm -hmm. cause that's kind of like our target demographic, of course. Um, so I would recommend it because, um, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this episode, um, it kind of gets you just right out in the middle of it, out of, out nature. And like you, you really, I mean, you could sleep in and I have, of course, too. Um, you can kind of just peek out, you know, beyond your tent and go like, eh, it's going to be a cloudy morning. Probably won't be a sunrise. Not really the best factor. I'd say get out of your tent and check. But like, I'm just saying there's been some mornings where I do sleep in. Um, but like, it gets you out in the middle of the woods or the meadow or wherever you may be at. And like, you really have no excuse to get out there and take photos. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, like, I think my most memorable uh, morning out camping was there was just this dense fog and I looked outside. I mean, and I was just, you know, peeked out of my tent. I think it was like seven, six AM even, um, midsummer, I think. And it was just this dense fog. I could clearly tell what was just going on. And I was just instantly put on my shoes, got my camera out and started just hiking around. I didn't even pack up the tent and I didn't, I was hungry a little bit and I just skipped breakfast for like, I think like two hours and I started hiking around taking photos. And like I said earlier, if I, if I slept in at my house, I look outside and go, oh, cool fog, but I may, you know, get to a cool location. And it may dissipate. You know, I've had that happen before actually a few times, but like when you're out in the middle of it, you have no excuse, you know, you're out there like, and just that may be your main reason. Like it is for the most part for me is to like take photos out there and you can do it. And like, it's just, it's right there. So I recommend that. Um, I would also say like, it's also just kind of, I feel like it immerses you a little bit more in nature, not to get so like, you know, hippy dippy about it, but like it does make you feel more in tune with the bird song, the you know the things you kind of hear at night. I guess with nocturnal wildlife, um, and it just gets you more familiar. I think with just the landscape and just getting more familiar with the gear. And I just feel like the whole the whole experience is just really overall just kind of rounds out my appreciation of outdoors. And um, mm -hmm. like I said, I feel like I do get some better photographs especially with sunrises. Cause I am always like in a hurry. So like <laughs> it does feel more calming, I guess, to just sit there and just enjoy it, you know, and view it, you know, right there in front of you too. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I know like looking out your window, um, up at the sky, you're looking at quite the small window when you're camping, you can, you know, walk around a bit, like you said, and really you might find some unique light poking through the clouds or something that you just would not see from your house. So, and like I mentioned earlier is like, it's in a way it's a rite of passage. Cause it's like, especially a lot of these like Metro parks that close at, you know, at dusk or at sunset, or they might only be open until eight or 10 PM. Like if you're there overnight, I mean, like what's stopping you from like walking around with your headlamp and taking some astro photos, like, especially if you're out in like a dark sky area, like there's just like a lot of options that I think are really fun. And, um, you know, I just feel like the whole, like I said, like I keep saying is like the whole experience overall is just really just fun you know it's just something different it's refreshing um and can't recommend it enough i just say get some nice gear if you can and just try it out and see see what you think of it you might not like it and you might be more of like a day hiker and photographer but like this might be more of your style too so it's mm -hmm. worth trying out yeah i know for michigan i'm already uh i may car camp you know it's i guess that'd be considered glamping but um there's this plover beach and I already know when I'm, you know, I'm going to car camp so I can get right out on the beach as soon as the, the sun, you know, tops over the water. Uh, I've already got plans for that. So I'm excited. I'm going to try it a lot more next summer. Oh, that sounds awesome, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine by the beach, that'd be something cool. That's different. Oh, yeah. We don't really have that in the middle of Ohio. <laughs> no, I mean, you could go up to Lake Erie and do it, but yeah, that's an idea too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd recommend though, like I, I know I said stealth camping a little bit ago or earlier, um, that your mileage may vary with that. Be, be, I'm not going to recommend it because it is questionably ethical or I, I still leave no trace, but like, just be safe and smart about things like that. And, uh, for most of my camp trips, I am legitimate about it. I do pay a little money to do it and register and, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say condone just showing up anywhere and just pitching a tent, having a fire, just that kind of thing. So, I mean, yeah, just be reasonable about it and um, do your research. I mean, there may be local areas, you know, your, your nearest park down the road may offer campsites and it might be glamping. It might be a primitive site, but um, do your research and just see what you may like the most and go from there. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, so just for our kind of final question here, wrapping up the show, do you have any future plans, camping plans? 
Uh, I want to do more. Um, the, the same couple of metro parks I do around here that I have done around my area. I want to do them some more. Uh, maybe like slightly different seasons. Like I might do peak fall foliage or early spring, I guess. So you get like migration birds or ephemeral flowers. Um, I guess as you mentioned with car camping, I did that for my Hawking Hills trip. Um, maybe something more like that too, sleeping in the car. Um, that's always an idea too. Um, but um, I want to try more of these. Like there's a couple of big name, like state forests in Ohio that you can actually, you know, I think you don't even need to register like with money, but you just show up. And if you get there first, you get the site and it's totally primitive. So you have to pack in your own water and food and all that stuff. But um, that sounds like a lot of fun to me. Um, just hiking up to a location and just, wherever I may stop for the day or night, you know, and just pitching a tent there. So, um, stuff like that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, this is, this has been a great show. Um, it's, it was great to interview you, Ryan. You've, you've done quite a bit and it's, uh, I really enjoyed your advice. So thanks for letting me interview. Yeah. Thanks. Man. Um, yeah. Thanks for the great questions too. Um, I hope everyone, I hope most people get something from this episode and, um, hopefully it inspires them to um, mm -hmm. get out there and camp too, of course. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.